Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm Dr. Linda Kramer. Okay, ha ha ha. How many people realized my last video ended before I said the result? So here is part two. I actually did mean to say it was part two in my first video. Oops, sorry for doing that. But it makes you watch both, right? <laughs> Some people only watch movie um, videos for about 10 minutes. So I don't like my videos going for too long because we all do get busy, right? Who's got six hours just to watch Linda today? I don't have six hours to watch Linda today, okay? So let's get straight into it. Part two of mental health and the life review. In my last video, I was talking about people who have got mental health issues and if this does trigger anyone today please go and talk to somebody about what you're going through you know mental health right now is prevalent everywhere as i said in my last video please go and talk to a professional about it if you are feeling sorrow pain trauma etc okay there are support networks out there and we've got to try and stick this all together. Uh, we've got to be there for each other. So tomorrow when I do my live, which will be on the 12th of February 2023, it's going to be a pep talk. Okay, we've all got to be there for each other. So back to this video. When we have mental health or other deliberate conditions <laughs> I am dyslexic okay um, when we have de debilitating disease um, illnesses diseases etc whose fault is it we've got to remember here that if people are born with epilepsy people that are born with mental health people are born into poverty where they feel that they're deserving huh that one's the odd man out. Did you notice that one? That's the odd man out. If we're born with a condition, then we had no say in that. But there are conditions in our lives that we do get a say in, right? And it's those conditions where I hope that people are reading all the tools and development in all my books as well as my videos that shows us how to get out of those ruts. Um, be in depression um, depression is only based on the past. Anxiety is based on trying to control the future. Those sort of things. So once we realize what we're doing, we can try and change our outcome, right? But then again, we have situations like the two men that live down the street from me, Maxwell and Raymond. They don't have any say in what happens to them. They've got massive mental and intellectual handicaps. So how do they go through their life review? And I'll tell you, it's actually easier than what we think. Because when we faced, you know, I've, I'm going to base this on about 10,000 near-death experiences that I've read over the last two decades. When we're standing there in whatever perspective, because a lot of people don't see the big three like me. Some people are there talking to Jesus. Other people are by a lake. So we all have these different, different perspectives of how we do our life review ultimately right but when we're standing there we only judge what we did so if we're born with short-sightedness that requires us to wear glasses forever is that something I did to myself intentionally because it comes down to our intentions which are our thoughts so if we do something deliberately, like hitting someone to cause them pain, and I just want to pause there, if this does happen to you, please go talk to someone about it, okay? So if we are in the situation where we inflict it, we then are the ones who have to heal it. I've been in abusive relationships before and what happened from them to me is none of my business. It's in their opinion as to whatever they did to me. So I only have to heal how I reacted 
to what they did. I only have to heal how I felt and my intentions and my thoughts that were created or manifested into energy that is then out there in the karmic energetic field of the universe. Because every thought that we have creates emotions. Believe it or not, emotions are energy. Energy is frequency, frequency is currency. So every time we're happy, we're putting out an electrical field of that good emotion. Huh, funny. Because when we go to heaven, what we're doing up there is we are realigning all those emotional frequencies back into a neutral energy field, which is called karma. So if I'm extremely happy, I then heal that happiness to create the balance. And if I'm nasty to someone down here in the negative field, I then heal that as well so it returns to the karmic balance or what I call the alignment. If you have a look at my other YouTube channel, it's called Angelic Intent where it's alignment of energies, okay? I've got to go watch those and at some point when I'm not so busy and bring them over to this channel. But ultimately, the more we work on this now, and the more we heal our past memories, actions, and even reactions of what we've done personally, we have a far, 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 far better life review than somebody who is always nasty. So when we have mental health, is this something that we have created through our own regrets, our own grudges, our own perception that we've manifested into energy, which is emotions. So when we get depressed, it's usually because of past failures. We get upset because things didn't go the way that we wanted them to. So how do we heal that? Is by telling ourselves now how great we are, how special, loved, cherished and adored we are. Because the more we get out of that rut, I firmly believe that it's those grudges, those regrets, those mistakes that we feel that we've made is what causes the hellish experiences that people have. I'm going to, I don't know this person's name, but I'm going to talk about the NDE of a guy that I read once. He was actually a priest. So how close to God was he? He's a priest. So he had an NDE where he was in a very hellish experience, reliving a memory from 30 odd years before where he was hurting people. He had a grudge over how he was being treated and treating others. So he created that perspective. He, pers he created that reality that he was stuck in, which is hell. So someone said to me the other day, she said, Linda, what is the purpose of your channel? And I said, the purpose of what I want is so when everybody gets to this moment, when we're standing there judging ourselves, it's a good experience. I want everyone to go there and go, wow! Instead of, oh, crumbs. I want everyone to feel the elation, that joy, happiness and love, rather than going through all the negative emotions of grudges, regrets, spite, jealousies, traumas, hurts, and most of all, regrets and grudges. I want everybody to be standing there knowing that it's a great experience where we heal all that love and we feel it tenfold. So then when we go into heaven, we are emitting that from our core 
and we are then part and one of everything in that place. So if there is a reason why I do this channel, that's what ultimately I'm trying to accomplish here. The world's gone mad. <laughs> Let's just go there. The whole world has gone mad. So how do we create just one little sliver of love in that? And it all starts within us. It all starts within us. So if you do suffer from mental health or other conditions that you blame on something or someone else, start to look at it as an opportunity. I don't blame myself for wearing glasses. I don't blame myself that I've lost teeth. I don't blame myself I've got a broken neck. I don't blame myself for everything that's happened in my life with two failed marriages and a failed fiancé. I don't look at failures as being failures. I look at all the failures as being chances to be better than I was the day before. How do we know how far we're coming is when we look at tomorrow and say, I want to be better tomorrow than I am today. So if you do struggle with mental health, please know, try and get out of that. Try and see that what happened in the past was not your fault. We only did what we could do at that time. And try not to have any regrets over what you should have done. Because that's just us trying to control the situation. In a world where there was no option at that time. And when we look at people who have diseases and other traumas that happen to their body, don't judge them. For they are the ones who have to judge themselves. And if it's something that they've always had, then there is no thing to judge. Nothing. No thing to judge. So as long as we do what we try in our heart and soul to be the best for ourselves, our friends, our family, our neighbours, community, and our planet and the universe, ultimately. As long as we try our best, how can we ever not have a good experience when we pass over? So I wanted to clarify that today, guys. This is extremely serious, what I'm now saying. It's probably the most serious video I've ever done out of the 260-odd videos I've done. We must try in these hard chaotic times to be the best and to show our best to others be that example be that inspiration and be that guide to show others how they can be as well okay for at the end of the day when we stand in front of who I stood in front of the big three I only judge myself I didn't judge my sisters, I didn't judge my parents, I didn't judge the cat, I didn't judge anyone else I'd ever met in my life. The only person I judged was me. So as long as I do what I wish and hope to be the best that I am, how can we ever fail? There are no failures, okay? Because we all do sign up for our lives. We have contracts. And that's important. Like Maxwell and Raymond, my neighbours down the street, they signed up to be in those bodies. So how are they going to judge themselves if that's what they signed up for? Food for thought, isn't it? And I don't know all the answers. I'm not an expert on this. I'm just a person who had the opportunity to die and see what is the chance of what we can all be on earth. So I hope that clarifies. I'd love to hear your comments. Comment away. Like this if you think it's worthy of it. Okay? And if you do want a copy of this book where I've got the last half of the book is called The Teachings of Heaven, How to Be Angelic. It's got all the tools, exercises. Everything's in the back. 
I'm just going to the beginning. So it's that far through the book. So all that there is all exercises. How to be a better person. And most of all, how to forgive yourself for what we've been through in the past so we don't carry on to those grudges and regrets. If you do want a free copy of my book, Five Years in Heaven, all you've got to do is email me and ask for it. I do give it away for free. So my email is below. All my contacts are below. Let's try and make this war more favourable in our direction. Love you all and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.